Now, now yeah. y- you were a, a skinny kid. You have a you don't have a massive bone structure, but you yeah. have a very interesting and very advantageous uh, shape to your muscles and your body. When you first started working out, did your body just because re- you said you were ninety eight pounds when you hi- when you yeah. graduated high school? Yeah. When you started lifting weights, did your body just respond? Did you build muscle easily? I guess so, but not not knowing it. And I remember, you know, at the local gym that I went to that they allowed me to train there. The bigger and older guys would be like, geez, you come in here and you just breathe the weight and you grow. Oh, but yeah. I, I didn't see that. I mean, you know, you don't see yourself growing like that. It's that old, you know, effect. You take a, a, uh, a mouse and you put it in hot water or a frog, you put it in hot water, it drumps out. You put them in cold water and slowly turns it up and it just sits Cooks. in both. So you don't, you don't see that changing over every day. And you're looking at these greater people. But I remember these always joke you know, like that, you know, you just come in here and just walk around and you grow. Were right? they recognizing the, the talent right out the gates? Yeah, the talent and even more so um, the genetics. And I, in my ignorance, you know, as, again, as embarrassing it is to say, I remember them saying, you know, when I was a teenager, wow, you got great genetics. And I look, I'm like, is that is that like calling me black? What, what do you mean? <laughs> I just like what does you know, that extreme, mean? <laughs> you know, extremely embarrassing. But I didn't know what it meant. I'm like, are you are you disrespecting me? I mean, I, I almost just, like taking away from your work ethic. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, I I just looked at it as, as a slur because unfortunately in that same environment I would always hear like, wow, Flex, you're great, man. You know, too bad you're black, or else you'd be great one day. And and again because it was my environment that I came from, I was like. <sighs> man, I guess nothing I can do about that. Because mm. I was so, you know, just not really honest, but just ignorant about the whole situation. And I didn't get upset. I was just like, geez, <sighs> can't do nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I wish I could, you know, so it was that same environment. So I just was taking it there, just being, you know, saying something derogatory again. Well, and in, in the 90s you had, it was an interesting era because you had, on the one hand, you had the very aesthetic type of bodybuilders uh, like you, I could place Sean Ray in that mm. category. And then you had uh, the mass monsters. It was really the, the, the yeah. birth of the massive, yeah. you know, there was that, that era when Dorian Yates Dorian, took second yeah. to Lee, yeah. came back like 20 pounds heavier. Yeah. Um, and then you had Nasser and, and all those guys. And so it was that, it was always that, 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 that conversation. Is it the aesthetic? Is it the symmetry and balance? Is, oranges. It, yeah. is it the size? Yeah. What was it like competing against Dorian? And in particular, I want to ask you, how did you feel when Dorian, because Dorian, you know, I'm not going to lie, was very dominant yeah. early on. Yeah. Then he tore his bicep and he still, <laughs> and he would win <laughs> these competitions. Perfect and, score still. And with yeah. a perfect score, there's no symmetry there. Yeah. One arm, one arm. And no, no, but you know, not knocking the guy. Dorian is no, one of my it favorite. It is what it is. It is what it How is. How did you feel at the time when you were competing and you're seeing this? Did you feel like, okay, they're just, this is just uh, po- politics? <sighs> you know, I, um, it angered all of us because at the beginning, I was just happy to be there. I, I didn't know anything. I mean, I, I I didn't come from a gym with magazines and all this. I, I didn't know crap. I, I didn't know you can even make money. I didn't turn in pro. Okay, so what? I, I didn't know anything. Oh, so wow. when I won the Arnold Classic, you know, and, you know, my, my second pro show, uh, my second win, I didn't freaking know what was going on. You know, I won the Ironman before competing against um, the great Lee Labrada and, oh, Victor yeah. and, and um, Vince One of Taylor. The great ones. Oh man, that's no, actually, right. No, I'm sorry. It was Vince Taylor. Um, That's right. You show. beat Vince Taylor as a rookie, yeah. which Vince is one of the greatest. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know what was going on. I thought, okay, this uh, this is Iron Man. It's a lower caliber show than next weekend, which is the Arnold Classic. He's a seasoned veteran. Veteran. He just, you know, kind of just f this one off. He's going to come in and just wipe me, you know. So next weekend it was Lee Labrada and him. So I'm like, I'm about to get my ASS tour part. I go plus, you know. My analogy, because I messed up, I'm like, they made a mistake. They're going to figure it out this time. I'm probably going to get last. They're going to figure out I'm a wank or I'm a, you know, I'm not really who I am or anything like that. And I ended up winning against both of those guys. And I'm embarrassed on stage that I beat these two You're guys. You're kidding like, me. So You um, looked insane on that show, too. I mean, just absolutely. It's crazy the way you 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 viewed yourself at that yeah. time. You know, I bet nobody else would think that. I bet no. probably people thought you were cocky, if anything. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because, again, I, I guess, you know, most uh, introverts, they're extroverts on stage or in public. You yeah. Know, because they're trying to hide that. You yeah. know, I get it. I know, you know, they said that about Michael Jackson and other great entertainers like that. But when they get out there, you can't imagine that they're, you know, uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable in public, period. I'm mm-hmm. uncomfortable in my skin. No matter where I am, I'm uncomfortable. So being on stage in my chonies in front of the world, is just like- <laughs> as, mean, as uncomfortable yeah. as it gets. <laughs> yeah, against other guys that I admired. So I just didn't see that. I guess you can almost relate it to the, you know, the beautiful girl in high school who just thinks she's an ugly duckling yeah. and she acts that way. 
you know, um, but no, I, 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 I didn't. Only later did I start kind of getting more aware of who I am and my arrogance started becoming even worse and I was my own worst enemy. But, you know, competing against Dorian my first time, it was my it was my first Mr. Olympia and my fourth pro show. It was different because everybody else had competed against. I felt OK on stage within myself. I'm, I'm uncomfortable and everything, but I didn't feel them. Right. I didn't I didn't feel them next to me. So my first time competing against Dorian, I remember thinking, geez, I can feel this guy's presence next to me. I mean, that's so much space he's taking up next to me. Um, and that's all I thought about it. I didn't think I was going to win or anything like that. I, I know after the show was the first and only time I met the great Serge Olivia. Oh yeah. Awesome. Uh, and it was just like, I mean, I'm, I was like shaking in my boots, you know, and he, we're going into the hotel together and he opens the door for me. He goes, you won that show. And I'm like, thank you. You know, but I'm like, in my mind, I'm just happy to be there. Did you notice I got second? You know, <laughs> but now I see what he's saying because of the matchup and the way the sport was at his time, which should have happened. I, I can get that now. So as as Dorian started having um, injuries, which it happens, you know, I mean, if you run hard all day long, you know, it's just like in a fight. If you got to gauge yourself, don't throw everything, you know, the first time, you know, you got to gauge it sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Um, but his analogy was go hard all the time, heavy as possible, most intense as possible. So you run into injury. So he was winning with a perfect score. And I was a little still younger than this, but Kevin Lavrone and, and Sean Ray were more aware and vocal. It's like, listen, okay, if you're winning with a perfect score and you have no injuries and then you have a injury that you can see, that's not perfect anymore. And then we have another torn muscle. How is that still perfect? So as me and Kevin and, and Sean were kind of more – um, I guess pleasing to watch polls, you know, um, we're better expressionists of ourselves or whatever. We knew that he wasn't. So how can you beat us in posing when you're not noted to be a better poser than us? And we look at the score at the end of the day, it's five, 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 five. That's perfect. I'm like, wow. So honest for me, I just didn't say nothing. I'd always just say, hey, listen, man, you know what? I'm going for second. I'm trying to hold everybody else off. That was my way of saying, I know what's going to happen. Mm. I just can't do anything about it. And me and Dorian got along great, other than Sean Ray and Dorian and Kevin Lynn and Dorian didn't get along at all. So I didn't really want to be disrespectful for something that this man had no control over. Mm -hmm. If they're allowing things to happen, why am I going to go and shit on his parade? That's not cool. You know, I, 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 that's not respectful. You know, so I would just try to take it to him on stage. I'm trying to beat him, but I understood what was going to happen. Yeah.